So I'm sure that my audience is going to be totally shocked to learn that Republicans are already trying to resurrect the birther movement when Kamala Harris hasn't even been Joe Biden's running mate for a single week. They are so predictable. Now, for those of you who don't remember what the birther movement is, this was actually a movement spearheaded by Donald Trump. He concerned, trolled, and fear-mongered about how maybe Obama isn't actually eligible to be the president of the United States constitutionally because he wasn't born in the United States. Now, he had no evidence for this claim, nonetheless. Um, he kept chugging ahead with that smear against Obama. Even when Obama presented his birth certificate, Donald Trump and other birthers were not satisfied. And the reason why, like, let's get down to it. The reason why there was a birther movement wasn't because they cared about the Constitution or evidence. It's because Obama didn't look like the other presidents that we had before. He was black. And the reason why there's a birther movement against Kamala Harris by Republicans is because, of course, she doesn't look like the other vice presidents that we've had before. Because they're racist. They're racist. That's why they're fear-mongering about whether or not Barack Obama and Kamala Harris are eligible to serve. Now, Newsweek published an op-ed by a law professor who raised some questions about Kamala Harris's eligibility and states that his concern really is about, quote, significant challenge to Harris's constitutional eligibility. So, you know, he's making a birther argument against Kamala Harris and he's not necessarily saying that maybe she's not eligible because she has a different skin color than the other vice presidents. It's because of the Constitution. You see, I'm not racist if I'm citing the Constitution as my main concern. Except you don't have any evidence. Again, she was born in California, so of course she's eligible to serve as vice president and president. Um, but he said this, and Newsweek, for whatever reason, chose to publish this racist garbage. And of course, Donald Trump saw that article and he decided to um, echo the same concern of this law professor. Now, just because someone has the title of law professor in front of their name doesn't necessarily mean that they should automatically be taken seriously because this individual is a clown. He not only tries to make a legal justification for theocracy, literally, he is to the right of Scalia. Can you imagine that? Someone being to the right of Scalia, a legal scholar being to the right of Scalia. So this idiot made a birther argument against Kamala Harris, Newsweek published it, and Trump is now uh, running with it. But before we get to Trump's comments, uh, let's learn a little bit more about this law professor. Because as Peter Montgomery of Right Wing Watch explains, Eastman has been one of the most vocal advocates for eliminating the 14th Amendment's protection of birthright citizenship. He has argued that it would not take a constitutional amendment, just a court decision or act of Congress to change what he believes to be an erroneous interpretation of the 14th Amendment. These ideas put him on the fringes of the right-wing legal movement. Citizenship and immigration are not the only issues on which Eastman pushes hard right positions. Eastman chairs the board of the anti-LGBTQ equality national organization for marriage and has called homosexuality an indicator of quote-unquote barbarism. He described the Supreme Court's 2003 Lawrence ruling, which overturned state laws criminalizing consensual gay sex, as a despotic decision. He attacked the 2015 marriage equality ruling as illegitimate and encouraged state officials to resist it. Eastman even supported Uganda's notorious anti-homosexuality act, which would impose life imprisonment in some cases. He has aligned himself with anti-equality and anti-choice efforts globally, speaking at the World Congress of Family summit in 2019. At a Senate hearing convened by Senator Ted Cruz after the marriage equality ruling in 2015, Eastman argued that a simple majority of states should be allowed to override egregiously wrong Supreme Court decisions. He urged Congress to advance some of the proposals to restrict the court before citizens' patience runs out, and they assert the right expressed in the Declaration of Independence to abolish the government that is oppressing them. Eastman's support for the Supreme Court's infamous 1905 Lochner decision, which ushered in an era in which the court rejected economic and labor regulations puts him in opposition to the late Antonin Scalia who opposed the Lochner ruling. Eastman has also taken a fringe position, one taken by Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, for whom Eastman clerked that the First Amendment's ban on the establishment of religion does not apply to the states and has argued that a state taxing people to support an official church, as some states did early in the nation's history, was not all that coercive. 
So obviously, that's all you need to know. And you will learn that this is an individual who definitely should not be taken seriously. But if you're Donald Trump, of course, he's not some fringe lunatic with bizarre ideas. He's a great lawyer. Because as CNN's Daniel Dale reports, Trump says he just heard today from a highly qualified lawyer that Kamala Harris doesn't qualify to serve as VP. Is not sure if that's true or not. That article was absolute nonsense. Harris, born in California, indisputably qualifies. So of course, Donald Trump, the original birther, the founder of the birther movement against Obama is going to latch on to the next birther movement. Of course, why wouldn't he do that? He doesn't know how to not be racist. He can't even pretend properly to not be racist. So, of course, he's going to do just that. Now, at a recent White House press briefing, he was asked about this and he got a little bit pissed off because um, the reporter was trying to hold his feet to the fire and um, his response was very telling. Will you say now that Kamala Harris is eligible to run and be vice president or president based on being born in Oakland, California? So, I have nothing to do with that. I read something about it and I will say that he is a brilliant lawyer, that I guess he wrote an article about it. So, I I know nothing about it, but it's not something that bothers me. But, sir, when you do that, it creates... Why do you say that? I just don't know about it, but it's not something that we will be pursuing. Know, let me put it differently. Mr. President, you know. Let me be... Because let me put it differently. Don't tell me what I know. Let me put it differently. Let me put it differently. Uh, to me, it doesn't bother me at all. I don't know about it. I read one quick article. The lawyer happens to be a brilliant lawyer, as you probably know. He wrote an article saying there could be a problem. It's not something that I'm going to be pursuing. Is she eligible, sir? I, I just told you. I have not gone into it in great detail. If she's got a problem, you would have thought that she would have been vetted. You would have thought that she would have been vetted by Sleepy Joe. Yeah, go ahead. Unreal. Now, again, Kamala Harris has not even been Joe Biden's running mate for an entire week. At the time I record this, an entire week. And there's already a Birther 2.0 movement. The GOP cannot help themselves. They can't help themselves. In fact, there is an article where Diamond and Silk is alleging that Fox News might actually be racist. Shocker. Fox News, Republicans, racist, doing things that demonstrably hurt communities of color? Them? Racist? What? Who would have saw this coming? <laughs> I mean, yeah, um... You play with fire, you're going to get burned. The Republican Party is overtly racist, like they used to be the party of racist dog whistles. But with Donald Trump's electoral victory, they are now the party of racist bullhorns because they're not really hiding it anymore. And I think that part of the appeal of Donald Trump among the GOP base is that, you know, he says the quiet part out loud. People don't have to pretend to be not racist anymore or anti-racist like they can just be racist and that's socially acceptable because donald trump the sitting president made it that way so the fact that there is this new birther movement against kamala is despicable it is despicable like for all the issues that i have with kamala all the policy disagreements i have like she doesn't deserve this it's morally reprehensible and you can already see that like the next uh, people of color who are trying to be elected to the White House, they're going to have to deal with this as well. Decades may pass and there still may be brother 3.0 and 4.0 movements because the GOP can't help themselves. One idiot writes this column that Newsweek for some reason decides to publish and of course the sitting Republican president is going to latch onto it and promote it and then get pissed when you ask him about it after he spent years concern trolling about whether or not Obama is eligible to be president. Despicable. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.